to reign and we got it. That to me is awesome. Um, once again, I want to uh, thank Pastor Charlie for giving me an opportunity to fill his shoes. Um, so first, shall we go to God in prayer? Dear Holy One, be with each one of us here. Share with me your voice. Allow me to be an instrument of your peace. May each one here and those watching this on YouTube be filled as it is written in Romans 5.5. 5. Hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God all my life long. This hymn of praise is truly uplifting. You want to jump up and sing until the rocks rock and the trees swing. I don't know about you, but as a child, I was told by my grandmother that I couldn't carry a tune in a bucket. My spirit was crushed. I would sing in the bathroom. I would sing in the car. I would sing as long as no one could hear me. It was when I started coming to this church that I started to sing out loud. Singing where others could hear me sing. Sometimes it's good, other times it's flat, but I can tell you it's a joyful noise. It lifts my spirit, it soothes my soul, and made it, may it also soothe yours. Try it, try it here. You see what I have found when we sing together as one body in Christ, it is a joyful noise. The Holy Spirit work, works through each one of us. Goose bumps will rise on your arms, your heart will leap with joy, and you close your eyes as you can hear the angels singing with you. Or at least I can. No, I'm not crazy. I do believe in angels though, and I believe that they're here on earth. Before you ask, no, I don't need medication. I believe that we have let the noise of life fill our ears and our hearts, and we can't hear them or see them, but they are here. Just ask a child. A friend of mine told a story that gave me goosebumps. She was babysitting her grandson. She had him on the changing table, changing his diaper. She said that he kept pointing so she asked him a question. Nicholas, Nicholas, do you see the angels? Where are they? He looked at her in the eye and began pointing again. She believes, and so do I. Children can see and hear the angels. A story is told about a couple that had two children, one that was five and the other a newborn. They feared that their son, Michael, five, would be jealous of their new newborn daughter, Sarah. So they never allowed them to be together unless one of them were with the children. On Saturday morning, they could not find Michael. They searched the house, and as they approached Sarah's room, the door was open. They paused at the door. Michael was looking into Sarah's bassinet, and they heard him say, Sarah, do you see the angels? Do you hear what they are saying? Can you tell me, please? Because I'm beginning to forget. Have you forgotten? If you have, our doors are open. Allow us to introduce you to not only the angels, but a loving and forgiving God. You will also learn about love, faith, hope, contentment, relationships, and stability. DJ found it when asked what contentment means to her. She writes, it's being satisfied with what you have, whatever that is. I look at it as being happy and satisfied, sense of contentment with all that I am grateful for. Linda found it. She writes, contentment to me is knowing that I am safe and loved, that I'm never really alone all the blessings God has given me, family, friends, a home, and Dana. Happiness is contentment. 
you can find that happiness and contentment all in one book. The book you can find on the bestsellers list, although it is from the Most High, it is written by humankind. And if you'll take the opportunity to really read the Bible and let it speak to you, hopefully today we can come together and it speaks to us all. So let's open the book and take a look at today's scripture and see how it speaks to me and to you. Shall we begin? You heard Mary Lou read the scripture. In 1 Timothy, one begins with Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the command of God our Savior and of Christ Jesus our hope. To Timothy, my loyal child in faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Sovereign, and Christ Jesus our Lord. As you can tell, this is a letter from Paul to Timothy. Today, we would write, Dear, and go and skip this, and go straight to the basis of our letter. If we are sending a text or email, we would do the same. In today's letters, emails, or texts, we would skip the salutation. I wonder how our letters, emails, or text would read and be received if we would add something positive in the beginning. If nothing else, it would bring a smile to one's face and their heart would leap with joy. How about you? I think I'll try it. What do you think? Paul writes in verse 6, 6, that there is great gain in godliness combined with contentment. This verse speaks to me. I would interpret it to mean as I grow in an understanding of the Trinity, God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit, I will be content. In verse 8, in verse 8 it reads, if we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. I cringe. Because I would want to add food, clothing, of course, a roof over my head, my job, my smartphone, an internet connection, just a few things that my humanness wants to have. So I do allow my humanness to come in. Paul goes on to write about being rich and having money and why we need to be on guard. I like to watch E or E online, it puts having money and being rich in a greater perspective. In verse 9, but those who want to be rich fall into temptation and are trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. We hear about those that are million dollar lottery winners. You hear about the win, but you don't hear about five years later, ten years later. Where are they now, I wonder? I'm taking a wild guess, but we all dream. If we had only had that winning lottery ticket, I would dot, 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 and I would dot, 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 dot. You can fill in the dots. But what I found is the lottery is also very sad. I was in a convenience store when I saw an older model car, you've seen the kind, it has about black smoke coming from the exhaust. If you shut it off, you don't know if it will start again. The passenger jumps out wearing dirty jeans and flip flops. She runs up to the store clerk, handing her the lotto ticket she has in her hand. The clerk gives it back to her and says, our machine's not working. She rushes quickly out the door looking for another store. First I say a prayer for her, and then I say a prayer for myself, because I'm beginning to judge. As you all know, I work in the addiction field. It can also be very sad. Addiction takes hold, and the addict alcoholic, as the scripture reads, is trapped by many senseless and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction. Addiction not only affects the one that is drinking or using, it also affects every person that cares about them. 
you fall into that category, I want you to know that recovery can be attained. Recovery is when the person that no longer drinks or uses helps another. So on and so on. See, this is my soapbox, my passion. So let me step down and redirect myself to the scripture and what it continues to say about money. For the love of money is a root of all kinds of evil, evil, and in their eagerness to be rich, some have wandered away from the faith and pierced themselves with many pains. I can see where money, no matter how we get it, through the lottery, inheritance, or we were just born with it, can become a great divide between our fears and our faith. The fears might be, do they really want to be friends with me, or is it because of my money? Does she really want a relationship with me, or is it because of my money? If I contribute now, Will they call me for more? And our fears about our family step in. If I give them money now, what do I do when they continue to ask? Now, I need a lawyer, a CPA, a money manager, a psychiatrist. And then the thought creeps in. Are they going to steal from me? Fear is extremely painful and debilitating. Paul, in his letter to Timothy, responds to these fears in verse 11. But as for you of God, shun all this. Pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, endurance, and gentleness. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called and for which you made the good confession in the presence of many witnesses. In most 12-step programs, after you've made a fearless and moral inventory, you're guided to admit to God, yourself, and another human being the exact nature of your wrongs. To me, this is the good confession that Paul is speaking of. It can also be every time we apologize when we fall short of the mark. When we do this, we find contentment and peace. When we live the greatest commandments to love God with all our hearts, with all our souls, and with all our mind, this is the greatest and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. We find contentment and peace. When we let go of our fears, we find contentment and peace. When we share with another, we find contentment and peace. When we share God's love, we find contentment and peace. The scripture ends with Paul talking about being rich. Be rich in good works, generous to share. So I want everyone to know we are all rich. We may not have won the lottery, but we have won the lottery of life. We have done good works. You may ask yourself, what good works? If you have donated to the church through the League of Benefact Benefactors, Offertory, our goods for the Red Door Pantry, you have done good works. If you have been generous, you have done good works. If you have shared with another, you have done good works. Remember, financially we brought nothing into the world so that we take nothing out of it. What we have brought into this world is love, peace, faith, trust, and understanding. We are born with those traits. I can see it in the face of Elizabeth Messenger when Bessie posts pictures on Facebook. And Lucas as he dances in a posted video. I believe he's dancing with the angels. Let me reiterate this again. We are born with love, peace, faith, 
trust and understanding. Believe it or not, love, peace, faith, trust, and understanding is what we take with us when we leave this world. Ask anyone in hospice. The angels guide us into the world and walk with us holding our hands as we leave it. May the Holy Spirit be with those who have come into this world and are wrapped in arms of love. Be with their parents here on earth and guide them with that peace that passes all understanding. May the Holy Spirit be with those who have lost a loved one. May the emptiness that they are feeling be filled with your love, knowing that their loved one is with you today, sitting at your right hand. Happiness is contentment. I would like to invite you to share in our happiness. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. I will sing praises to the Lord as long as I live, all my life long, now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>